Well, we're on the blog topic six of water baptism. Water baptism is a required part of the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. Yep, I uh, don't know how people get around this. Uh, it's very clear, as you will see. So we'll go through it step by step. We touched on this already in uh, the second baptism, uh, blog topic two. In the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 through 20, it's one account, Jesus said to his apostles to definitively holy, already having therefore gone to another place. So he's kind of using words in a sequence, kind of showing, hey, you got to first do this, and then you got to do this, and then you got to do this. So they, in the Greek, they use these different um, moods. Uh, they use different tenses, I should say. So the aorist tense, put it in the past, definitively holy. Then he used a participle, already having gone. Uh, this is pat, aorist participle, therefore having already gone to another place. So they, they wanted to go to different places. Here they were at the uh, red. So they have been moving around already. <laughs> They had to go out to this mountain where Jesus ascended. I strongly urge you to, this is Jesus speaking, definitively, holy, make disciples of, it's all these Greek words, you can go see the link, of all the nations. Wow, yeah, all the nations. Do you think that they did it? No, this is for the whole church age. Routinely, because they, all the nations in the world, good luck, I'm traveling. Traveling was slow back then. Uh, routinely, baptizo, Water baptizing. Now we know what that is by immersion. We know water baptizing by, was by immersion. We already know that, so I can just type that in by immersion. And we know what they, they did. Uh, baptizing them, ice toward and reaching the goal of. So ice is preposition. You're, you're baptizing, you're making disciples uh, routinely. And you're moving them towards reaching and touching the goal of, right? The name or authority of the Father and coupled the Son and coupled of the Holy Spirit. So they're coupled together, right? They're all coupled together. So I'm going to put in parentheses, the coupling implies uh, the triune God because it's not separate people. Different conjunction would be used for that, but it's all in the name and authority of the triune God. Routinely teaching them, these are all routinely or habitually teaching them to, uh, did it say teach? No, teaching them to watch carefully, to guard, it's a military term, to maintain or preserve, right, you're guarding the post, you're maintaining it. Right? To keep intact. You know, don't let anything be stolen. <laughs> don't let the enemy take anything. Take any ground. You're at your post. To terio, watch carefully to guard, to maintain, preserve, or keep intact. However many, so hasis means however many, didn't say all, he says however many that I have in telemai, this is only used of commandments, officially decreed or commanded as universally binding to you. So how many were there? <laughs> there was only two. There was only two times that Jesus said these were entelemi, uh commanded. Or the Greek word, uh, the noun is entole, entole. So you go look at the link called commandments, and I'll just put that decreed or commanded, as universally binding to you. It's, it's what a king, is what Jesus, the 613 commandments of the Old Covenant. The parallel, parallel passage in Mark 16, 15 through 16, has Jesus saying a similar thing, definitively holy, already having transported or gone to another place, ice toward and reaching the goal of, the whole world of people, wants them to go into the whole world of people, 
I strongly urge you to definitively holy proclaim or herald or preach the Logos message, which is the gospel. Okay, he wants them to preach the great news gospel. That's the good news. And that's what it means. Good news, great news, gospel. To pass all uh, the creation. All of that creation. Right? So to all of that creation. The one who has definitively wholly had trusting relying faith and... Here it is, coupled, definitively holy, has been water baptized. So you have to have faith and our water baptized shall actually be saved. There it is. However, the one who had definitively holy, not had trusting, relying faith, will be condemned. So why didn't he repeat himself? Well, in Greek, you do not have to repeat yourself. If something is linked in the first case, trusting, relying faith to water baptism, you don't have to repeat baptism and link it to trusting, relying faith. In Greek, it's already an assumption. You already know this. But you can say that baptism is really tied up in this word trusting, relying faith. And we see that in the previous blogs that if you had faith, you're going to be obedient. If you didn't have faith, you're not going to be obedient. So it's an assumption that if you have trusting, relying faith, you're going to be water baptized, especially when you were told to do it. So it proves if you're not water baptized, you do not confess your sins, you do not repent, you do not confess your sins, you do not confess that Jesus is Lord. If you haven't gone through all that, you don't have trusting, relying faith because they instructed people back then. This is what you do if you have trusting, relying faith. You get baptized. You get you repent from your sins. You turn to you turn from your sins. You turn to Jesus. This is repentance. You confess this publicly. It's not just a secret initiative, right? Remember, this doesn't even work in Judaism. You can't do this secretly. You have to do this publicly. You have to have two or three witnesses. And Paul talks about Timothy's two to three witnesses. And at his baptism. He got a spiritual gift. He got the gift of evangelism. Isn't that awesome? This passage is uh, usually considered the earlier, shorter version of the Great Commission, Mark's. Notice the same structure of assuming that they have already gone out into the world, right? They already got, you know, they, right? The imperative, strong urging of Jesus. But here... Matthew's disciple making, right, by routinely water baptizing of uh, Matthew's all nations. Now, did I get this right? Yes, all nations, Matthew's, right, it says water baptizing of all nations, or marks the whole world of people, and that all of all that creation, right, of all that creation, right, that's what he said, all that, of all that creation, yep. So, either way, whatever version must therefore equate to proclaiming or preaching the gospel that brings the whole world's people to take two coupled required actions. They're coupled. They're coupled together. They're coupled together required actions in order to actually be saved. So, they're both viewing this um, commission from a, maybe a little bit different viewing angles, different emphasis, but it's the same thing. One, definitively holy having faith, and coupled to this, definitively holy being water baptized. So, the whole world. And the opposite of this, that meets with condemnation, is simplified to... Uh, not definitively holy, having, trusting, relying faith. It's simplified. So you don't have to, right? We already talked this. Adjoining phrases in Greek are not separate ideas, but the same parallel idea described two ways for clarification and emphasis, much like poetic stanzas are. As we have seen in previous blogs, and here's another link, 
the New Testament writers, one stanza defines the other stanza. The New Testament writers understood that genuine, that's the key, genuine, trusting, relying faith that actually saves you is a process of five steps. So it's going to have, in, in one of those, and here we see here, we see here that this last, it, okay, so we know from the la, in that five steps, the last being water baptism. So water baptism was the final step, just, we, just as we see in so much of the rabbinic Judaism uh, ways people became Jews, right? And here we see uh, that this last opposite condemnation phrase in parallel, as a parallel stanza, right? As a, this is just the way they write, uh, parallel stanza means that, means that not being condemned Right, that that not being condemned or having salvation thus requires a trusting, relying faith that includes water baptism. See, those who do not have trusting, relying faith will be condemned. That's a stanza that tell that's equal to the other stanza. So it's just saying that trusting, relying faith that does not have water baptism in it is condemning. And that's what we saw in the Jewish... They, the Jews said you had to be water baptized. You know? Uh, you think it was an option when John the Baptist came out? No, it was for the forgiveness of sins. And he was paving the way for the Lord. And so we see this coupling, made even clearer by the coupling. So you, you got to see, you know... Um, John the Baptist, this is very important because Jesus just took over. Uh, John the Baptist prepared the way for the Lord. And he and John, right, required water baptism as a repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we've already um, we've already seen, seen this. And you say, well, I, I don't want to go back and read. So I'll just say is this is a tool, you just go to Bible Gateway, type in, I'm in the English Standard Version because that's a standard formal equivalent standard um, and I just typed in repent and forgive and John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a repentance for the forgiveness of sins well I need I need not go any further I was almost there it is a water baptism of repentance Can't get any clearer. See, of or belonging to repentance. You see, water baptism is part of repentance. <laughs> it belongs to repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And that is Mark 1, 4. But it's also, you can see here, Luke 3, 3. And so here it is, Luke 24, 47, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So, you know, we better put that in here. That's Luke 24, 47. Maybe I did later on or not. Um, so 
So I'll just put a note here. See Luke 2447's Great Commission. I might have already done this, but so this might be repeated, but just better safe than sorry. And you can see, you know, this for the forgiveness of sins. You know, if you say, well, is that really? So what you can do is go in uh, Bible Hub and you can just type in Mark 1 4, for instance. And you can see proclaiming, yes, it's the word ice. And we know that ice means toward and reaching the goal of. So if you want the goal of the forgiveness of sins, you have better be water baptized. <laughs> it's just really clear here. I don't know how many times you can try to get around this. So now let's unpack Matthew's version. All right, go and make disciples are both Greek aorist tense verbs that tell of the timing, the chronology relative to the other actions in the verses. The aorist passive participle, go, is better translated, y'all, because there was 11 apostles, already having been passively, definitively wholly transported to other destinations by my orders and through the Holy Spirit as we see in the book of Acts, right? So they had already been told what to do. Go wait in Jerusalem. Go wait for the Holy Spirit. Go here. Go there. Do this. The aorist participle puts this in the past relative to other verbs in the sentence of making disciples, water baptizing, and teaching. So those are the other verbs. It assumes they will be marching uh, to other ports. That's really what it means. They had already been told, and it assumes they will repeat this. The Greek verb uh, for making disciples is used only three other times. In Matthew 27, 57, it literally means who also himself was discipled by Jesus. Um, so it's, it's a rabbinical thing, you know, passing it on. Matthew 13, 52, it's translated as has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven. In Acts 14, 21, it is translated, had many made many disciples as something done additionally to preaching the gospel. So it's something different than just preaching the gospel. Logos message. This could explain why Mark 16, shorter version of the Greek, does not mention this disciple making. Jesus assumed it in the preaching of the gospel. But by Matthew's version... And Acts 14.21, clarification needed to be made. So, you know, things get lost in translation <laughs> over time. And uh, Matthew, what came in, Matthew's version came in after uh, quite a bit. I wonder what's the book. Well, we can just find out when was Mark written. Let's see what that is. It says uh, between 65 and 75 AD, right? So 65 to 75 AD. So we got that version. And then when was Matthew written? So it's good to know these things. I don't know. Matthew written, and it says uh, normally dated to the late 60s or early 70s, second, uh, some teachers ignore to date this gospel in the 80s and 90s, um, let's see what Wikipedia says, second generation for Well, it says between 65 and 70, but a lot of them are saying 80s to 90s. So Matthew came in after 
Well, we don't know. <laughs> Matthew's version can be 60, 60s to 90s. Well, everybody hears different things, right? So maybe Mark was focused. He's a Gentile. He's focusing on certain things, on Jesus' many miracles. Immediately he did this. Immediately he did this. Matthew's concerned more about teaching uh, it's Jew, Jesus as a rabbi. Um, it should have been common knowledge that a disciple is one who voluntarily takes on the dis disciplines given to him by his leader slash rabbi. Uh, that's what it was known for in the process of learning uh, from and following him. So and we know that Matthew, right, Matthew focus uh, was on Jesus as a, as a respected rabbi. We, we know this from many of his right you know his writing style, what he focuses on. And Mark uh, about his Christ's miraculous doing, right? That, that's what he really focused on. Because remember, the, the, the Gentiles were really into the miraculous of God, right? The ma of their gods. And so Mark is trying to compete against the other Gentile gods, and Matthew's trying to compete against the other rabbi gods. So whatever the dating issue is, um, maybe it's just a different focus. Jesus said his disciples would have to make hard choices to follow him, even leaving family members bearing your own cross of self-denial and of persecution from others and renouncing everything for Jesus. Tough times. You can't just agree with his gospel logos message for a little while. You have to abide, remain, continue, live with his gospel logos message in order to actually be set free. Jesus said that. And free from what? It says uh, John uh, 8.31 is free from the uh, slavery of the practice of sin. An endurance of, that's what disciple really is. It's not just a, a flash in the pan, right? An endurance of trusting, relying faith is required to be truly saved. There's a lot of on this subject. Um, it's not just a one-time event. Unconditionally loving one, and a lot of times you see the word uh, trusting, relying faith as in the present tense, present and ongoingly, and a lot of times in the participle, which means a habitual lifestyle of it. Unconditionally loving one another proves we are his disciples and is our only true witness in the world or to the world. Jesus said that, for certainly this is the proving fruit that glorifies the Father. This is the proving singular, it's not fruits plural, but singular fruit that glorifies the Father. And the only two commandments, there's only two commandments of trusting, relying, faith, and unconditionally lo uh, loving one another are integrally tied together throughout the New Testament. So you can see these links that I provided that will really go into that. Jesus didn't use the imperative to strongly urge the apostles to make believers or people, right, who simply mentally agree with the, um, what am I saying? He uses... Jesus did, did use the imperative to strongly urge the apostles to make believers. Um, he didn't use it uh, to people who simply mentally agree with the gospel logos message. They preached about Jesus as their Messiah or Savior, right? So I'm having a little problem. Jesus used the imperative to strongly urge the apostles to make believers, right? Not people who simply agree, right, to a message that was preached about Jesus 
as their Messiah or Savior. Right? It's not mental agreement. Right? Mentally agreeing. Mental agreement is not the definition. Now, that might be in our English Bible, our English thinking, our in English dictionaries, but mental agreement is not the definition of having Pistis trusting relying faith. And if you want to look at that detailed definition, you can go to this link that I provide. Nor uh, to get people, nor um, did uh, Jesus um, use this to get people to simply confess the creeds of the Christian faith, right? That's what a lot of churches I've been in said, oh, you just need to um, say these creeds. Right? Nope, because that is not the definition of repentance. So you got a problem here. Um, the definitions used for salvation of repentance and faith uh, are not what we've turned them into being. So you want to see the meaning of confession under sur surrender control. So I, and you you can see that in previous um, videos that we just talked about, right? So, but you also want to see this link about obedient steps of faith. So I've, I've done a lot of this homework for you. You can really just read it and pray about it and see what you, you know, what you come up with. And this will save you a lot of time because I already did all the work, but you can just read through it. A disciple is much more Right is much more than just a believer. Right, those who have made Jesus the Lord, Master, Owner. Right, that's that's the word curios. Of their life. That's what curios means. And Jesus is about. To further define the disciple making process in Matthew's account. Right? So it's, it's more than a mental uh, believer or, or confessor. Yeah, it's a lot more. And he's going to go into this. The earliest confessions of the trusting, relying faith were Jesus is Messiah, Savior, and Lord. Here the imperative verb, make disciples of, is indicating Christ's central Strong urging for which all the other verbs relate. It's assumed that the that once the eleven apostles have already transported or gone to another place, that it was the purpose for the purpose of making disciples, not just enjoying the view, doing business, or just preaching the gospel. Even right, again, the aorist tense means that Christ is viewing the action as a whole. For certainly, discipleship is a lifetime process. Because of the imperative, Jesus could also be emphasizing it definitively, right? Get it done as good as done. Now, the next two present participles actually describe adjectively, as an adjective, right? Adjective phrase. What goes on in making disciples? So one phrase, this is the way it works in Greek, one phrase 
defined as another phrase. So making disciples is the overall uh, goal, right? Not sightseeing, not just even preaching the gospel. The present active participle of baptizo, water baptizing, is better translated. Y'all routinely as a lifestyle habit be water baptizing. Yes, water baptizing people was supposed to be their habit of making disciples or followers of Jesus. It's erroneous to think that you can be saved without being a follower of Jesus. Right? Whoever does absolutely, in fact, not presently, ongoingly take up his cross and coupled with this, presently, ongoingly follows me is absolutely, in fact, not worthy of me. There you go. Followers or disciples. And my sheep hear or listen to understand my voice. And coupled, I experientially, relationally know them. And coupled, they follow me. See that word, follow. And if anyone serves me, he must follow me. There's that word, follow me. So it sure seems like that word, follow, <laughs> is very clear. And so where I am, there will also be my servant. The, uh, th there will be a lot of so-called believers, <laughs> this is unfortunately, so-called believers of Jesus at Judgment Day who never became followers or disciples of Jesus because they were never water baptized. But then, in actuality, they absolutely, in fact, are not worthy of Jesus. He said that. And not his sheep or relationally known by him. And certainly are not his servants to be where Jesus is now. What a rude awaking it will be for them to face hell instead. I don't know how he's going to serve. He's going to tell people that are his, you get water baptized. He's going to make sure. And we see that in the book of Acts. People that he wants in the kingdom, he lets them know. There's the water, he says, what keeps me from being baptized. I mean, just strange incidents. They're going to find out. Um, but that's not all that is required for making disciples. The next present active participle, didasco, teaching, uh, is, right? That's what it is. But in context, this doesn't mean teaching them to obey everything that Jesus taught about on every subject. And remember, most of it did not get written down. John said most of it did not get written down. Too many preachers have made this their mission, but it wasn't Christ's commission. If it were, you would never finish working with even one believer in order to make him a disciple. You're just burning up your time. Nope. Jesus said instead, routinely as a lifestyle habit, teaching them to carefully watch or guard to maintain, preserve, or keep intact however many, right, however many that I have in telemai officially decreed or commanded as officially binding you, right? It's These are a, not very many. It's however many, and there's only two, it turns out. A careful study will reveal only two such commandments. That's it. Only two. No need to go look anywhere else, and they're actually linked together into one <laughs> from God, the triune God, in the completely different and kind new covenant, so perfectly combined in 1 John 3.23, and this is your singular entele commandment. That's it. Boom. Done. That we should definitively wholly have trusting, relying faith in the name or authority of His Son, Jesus Christ. And coupled to this, not a separate idea, one commandment, one compound commandment equals two parts. Presently, ongoingly, should unconditionally love one another reciprocally, just as He, Jesus Christ, already has given into lay commandment to us. This was the, okay, so there it is. Very, very clear. Uh, you don't have to go look in a whole bunch of other places. It's right there. This was the catechism. That's actually what was taught, uh, catechizo, taught as part of the gospel logos message to become disciples. The first into lay commandment from the Father is directed to unbelievers to enter into his unconditional love. And there is a whole link on this that you can read. So one was from the Father to get people saved. It's very makes sense, right? And then the second intele commandment, there's one commandment and another commandment. 
was from the front is from the father son, right? One was from the father. One is from the son. That is directed to believers to live his life of unconditional love through them for witness and testimony to bring the kingdom of God to earth. So this is how they will know. You will be my witnesses. And so that's really the Great Commission, is to be his witnesses. He says that in one of the Great Commissions, to be my witnesses to the end of the earth. And that is to live as Jesus did. Those who uh, profess him must walk as he, is, as he did. Again, there are a lot of components taught about each of these commandments in order to be uh, obeyed. So, you know, you can break them down into pieces, as we've done in some of these, but they are all to be done, right? We can try to understand the various components of each of those commandments. Even uh, 1 John goes into great length about each of them, but particularly goes into great length of the unconditional love uh, these believers are struggling with, struggling with this. Both are required to be disciples or followers of Jesus and thus to be saved. Faith and love, and this is what they were supposed to watch carefully. Guard them. Don't let them out of your sight. It's a military post, post like a guard at a post. So there's a lot here, guys. And I hope that you learned a lot. If you have some uh, more experience with this, there's a lot here in these six blogs. Maybe the Lord will... Give me time to go through some more, but it's been really tough um, just to stay up with life in this really difficult time. And Lord, help us. Lord, help us. We need your Holy Spirit to reveal the truth. You are the truth, Jesus. We need you to reveal the truth and show the lies and deceptions that are going on. A delusion, a strong delusion has come over this world because they do not love the truth. And so they are easily deluded. They're deceived because they don't really love the truth. And I have family members <laughs> that are not reading. They're not discerning. They don't have a spirit of discernment. There's so much lacking going on. Anyway, God bless you. Um, I'm sure you've run into the same problem. And so go ahead and put your experiences down below, okay? And we can learn from one another that way. All right? God bless you. Bye-bye.